what your angle is. They ban away the Kaiser, so they're giving up the AD mid. I'm assuming this is Corky first pick. Maybe something like Nautilus could be too, but this is a so powerful sh for Shanks. Why would you why would you not pick it? Yeah, why not? I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that's what we've seen teams a lot of the time trending towards, especially with the fearless style here. If they know that something can work one time within a game or a series, they're going to go for it. So, response from IG. Um, can you get yourself some stability in that bot side? Maybe that's the answer for it. I think that Arn Vampire have needed that. But instead, they go towards that Maokai. The Maokai is very easy to play around. Instant engage button helps you with objective setups and also can be built towards Leandri so you can go towards an AD mid laner like they own it. That's just locked in. One of my favorites of this summer split. I'm very interested in what Nani can do with that one. Or if we're going to see a little bit of flexibility with it. I love that one of the first things I said about the series. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for the fist of cuffs. All the skirmish, every fighting, jungling, <laughs> dope facilitation, blah, 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 blah. And then Maokai gets locked in first for IG on red side. So we'll see a bit of a response here. Some big picks still left up on the table. Skarner, a big one in particular, usually needed to be banned on red side, was left open. And here it is. So, Skarn is a strange pick within the LPL. We've had an awful lot of games of it. I do think the difference between a middling top laner and then a top tier top laner playing this pick is absolutely absurd. We saw against Ultra Prime, um, Ala managed to pull out a Skarn game, which was very, very impressive. Seeing the likes of Bree, 369, Bin do unspeakable things on this. And that will be a rock in that top side to try and get through. Double tank frontline now locked in with Croco on the Sejuani as well. IG, despite the fact that they have themselves that frontline engage of the Maokai, they're going to have to get through a lot of beef. I love it because it just feels like a pick that LPL is just like, no, we have an answer. Trust me, trust me. You've lost. And then you just, oh, no, I got it next time. I got this pick. I got, you know, we get, we, uh, you've lost. It's just over and over again. <laughs> Scarlet just keeps yeah, winning you from deficits. being a, you know, uh, being a Street Fighter <laughs> announcer. Not the commentator, yeah, but maybe, just doing maybe. the little yeah, in-game Yeah, just stats. doing the announcer. Maybe. Perfect we'll see, game. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be the Halo announcer in the end. Uh, but I, I think it is interesting <laughs> that teams have been willing to leave it open, and that's why we've seen so many of the Scarner picks. But the Cassante is the answer tonight from Zuyan. So this isn't going to be the LPL traditional trifecta of the Rumble, Mordekaiser, Twisted Fate to beat the Skarner in lane. This is saying I'm going to do the same job as you in a team fight and try and outvalue within that sense. That's quite hard to do because of Skarner's incredible staying power within team fights. And what that does mean is that you need to have carries that are worth frontlining for. Now, you don't have uh, 80 carries locked in on either side right now. Arn is going to have his Draven banned away from him. Turns out in Victor's game, it doesn't matter who they've got in the 80 carry role. They are just Draven players somehow, some way over the years. That has stayed true. That one's going to get banned away. Ezreal's still available, but not that high damage. It's not really a hyper carry. I think Arn needs some really high damage to meet mm. with this front line's potential. The fact that Hope has gotten the Varus six times before this in all the other series is uh, a testament to how strong the pick is, and IG do not want to deal with it. We've got a lot of bot lane focus for that second phase of bans. We'll see what the counter pick is going to be for for IG. Might actually be that support counter pick we've we actually seen here and there uh, as a jungle is okay. primarily locked in here. So that's going to be the marker into the support. So Griffith goes towards. Um that carry in the jungle, or GLFS, you know, I'm still not Aha! decided what I want to call him. Look, I'm just sat there and I just want to, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes. It's a really cool name. But still, going to be that brand. We know exactly what kind of damage that can do to the front line. Does mean that AL can go towards something like the Ziggs or the Ezreal. It's going to be a bit of an easier lane. Maokai, not a lane dominant champion, which opens up some other answers for Hope and Kyle. I think Hope has been a key component to anyone's legends successes but the zigs here are gonna have a lot of damage potential with this composition they still have a lot of uh, options here but they definitely want some engage to set up both the corky and the zigs but more the question becomes i mean we know what anyone's legend are looking for they go for the rel but now ig on the on the docket IG, what AD carry are we locking in? You don't have a huge amount of damage um, from the front line, but Brand into that jungle makes an awful um, lot of difference in that sense. They can go towards something a little bit more utility now. The Jin comes out. Jin Maokai, um, very, very famous from, what was it, World's uh, 2021, back when EDG 
won that tournament. It was uh, Damwon who were pulling this lane out all the time. And because you have such good engage with follow-up, it means that maybe the Yoni and the Brand can get those targets pinned down in front of them for their huge team fight burst. They still need to get through a Skada, a Sejuani, and a Rel. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but I do think that IG have got themselves a composition which is ready to scrap. And that's exactly what they want to be doing. AL, our question to them once and again is about not just falling into the pace of IG's game. Use your game sense, use your intelligence, and try and make sure that IG are taking fights they're not prepared for. And for IG, utilize some of the synchronization that can be had with this composition. I mean, giving on more of a utility pick to help set up the rest. Really relying on this top trio to be the engine that makes this composition run, it feels like. And it's going to have to be some really, really on-point decision-making from GLFS. And that's where the early priority for me is going to be at looking at how Croco, how GLFS attach themselves to other parts of the map, and especially how they can get Hope and On into positions of power. Setting up for those carries from one role or the other. Yeah, you do have yourself two very different kinds of junglers. You've got yourself that Brand and the Sejuani. They'll be performing very different roles, but that does not mean that they are less important than each other. It starts here. IG, if they lose today, things really start to heat up on the mail. They just want to have a victory lap. They need to see it through. Clean 2-0 would be on the table for them. They would like to start this off with confidence, and IG very, very much wanting to stand in their way. I'm cheering through the screen right now. Ouch! God, that hurt. I oh, love the crowd man. reaction after that. Was like, oh. <laughs> it's kind of fun to uh, feel what the arena feels like a little bit with those gyros. It gives us a good window into the energy at the time. Sometimes first game of the day, uh, you know, fans are trickling sometimes still funny. In, you know? They're trickling in. Sometimes they're, they're yet to be woken up by the gameplay. And hopefully we get ourselves, as we said, a good scrap. I want to see it. I want to see if IG continue that style of just permanently fighting, taking big engages. It has been um, very fun to see them do that. It hasn't always been successful, but it's been really fun. <laughs> hey, you know what they say about fun? You should always do what's fun. Uh, do they? <laughs> that's what I say. Uh, speaking of, Kyle said it was a lot of fun to engage on on at level one, so he went ahead and did that. But nice little trade back in this fourth shot, ready to push anyone's legend off of the 2v2. But that's where I want to check in on the jungle pathing. We have a bit of a unique one here by GLFS. He took the wolves, and he's going up towards top side. There is a vision ward up there. Yeah, so what uh, GLFS might end up doing is the reverse clay. You start on one camp on one side to avoid some level one shenanigans with the vision being put down. I think that kind of counts. And then you can play the other side of the map and end up on the side that you started at. It slows down your clear a little bit, but it means you can be, in this case, on bot side, which is realistically where you want to be at the end of your clear. The top side matchup, folks, it's a Skana versus a Kasanse. It's not necessarily <laughs> going to be the most... Uh, uh, important matchup to influence in regards to that. I think Croco on the other side, he just wants to make sure he's not running into the brand too early into the game. The brand is very powerful in the first clear. And we've, uh, Shun has taught the entire league that over time, that if you run into a brand yeah. at level 3, level 4, um, that's a bit of a problem. Hey, Nymera. Yeah? I think Croco didn't want to listen to you. Yeah, that's true. They did have the ward <laughs> down there, as he said. It could be a smite <laughs> fight. Oh, uh, it's going to be a little bit late around the corner as uh, Krakow not able to get the timing on that one, but was trying to go for it. And that's what I would expect in tradition for Sejuani jungle is you're trying to get up in the face of the clear speed and the clear path of the enemy, but not able to do it there. Uh, it's a weird thing with the Nidalee, with the, the Sejuani, right? Because when you're against stuff like, which is really aggressive early, sometimes you feel like you lack some of that power. Um, Brand is definitely one of the better early AP junglers, but yes, with that Sejuani, you just want to make sure you can stop that clear speed as best you can and impact the lanes a little later with your level 6 ultimate. Get that really big engage threat through. Need to see whether Croco can live up to that, because we've seen exactly what Brian can do on the other side. He gets himself fated ashes, clears, clears into oblivion, then becomes a huge damage threat himself. So anything to stop that game plan mm -hmm. is largely pretty important. 
And actually, the we look back at the pathing that you highlighted for GLFS, it's actually so big brain, right? He went to Krugs first instead of Red, so that meant that he was already on the way out as he was pathing. So all that time wasted for Croco meant that GLFS has now completed his entire clear and is already starting his back. Uh, it just means that he could be bot side for that um, Scuttle Crab. means that Arn and Vampire get a little bit of extra coverage in that vision, and it means that um, particularly when it comes to something like a Ziggs, if Ziggs ever gets to push up and hit tower, obviously that's a problem. Uh, you shouldn't really have that problem with the Jin and the Maokai. What this means is that you allow um, Arn and Vampire to lock down Hope and Kyle into lane. It means that the Ziggs can't just safely clear once he hits level 3, level 4, multiple levels of his Q, and Kyle can't just row him out and see if he can combo up with Croco across the map with the early CC that those champions bring. Croco had been waiting for the Raptors to spawn for a little while now. GLFS will be spotted as he comes over here, realizing there's no chicky nuggies to be had. Croco <laughs> has stolen them all. The man was He's hungry. taking his order. Taking his order. Order up, and Croco takes the second spawn of them. I suppose that ward, which they had earlier, spotting out um, GLFS taking those uh, definitely helps in regards to that. So that is something we did say. Hey, anything you can take away from a brand to stop him from clearing, <laughs> that's helpful. It's a little bit of something, but hey, we'll take that right now. We're waiting yet for um, the first objectives to spawn. Dragon is spawning right now. Of course, Grubs are a minute after that. IG immediately going towards Dragon. If they can take this quickly enough, they might even be able to rotate towards top side to contest for the Grubs as well. They take it pretty quickly as well. I mean, GLFS already burning it pretty heavily. Croco going to show up here. He's spotted out by the saplings, and that's what the Maokai presents. But Croco not willing to go for it. This vampire pops up the IG emote. It will be Dragon number one to Invictus Gaming. So this is the payoff for uh, Griffith um, GLFS. I, that name is going to get me because now I've, I've started <laughs> reading this. because you started this. reading the manga. I've, I've that's literally and why. <laughs> and it's a really good manga. And Griffith is a really good character. So I'm sat there thinking, like, wow, I kind of want to call him this. But it's also really confusing not to say the name that's on the it's screen. It's really confusing. Look, I'm, I am in turmoil, folks. But still, he pathed uh, in that reverse play against starting on the walls, but then ending up on bot side. Allows him to get towards that dragon really early after his first clear. It means that now he can clear from top side to bot side again when his camps come up. Need to see whether he's going to contest for um, these grubs, though. Typically, teams haven't contested for both sides of the early objectives. Need to see whether he feels like he can now. He's clearing Krugs and might actually look over there. Shanks has pushed the mid lane, so it will end up getting an extra body here by anyone's legend to do the grubs. Looks like it might just be that trade of objectives. Level 6 had gotten completed for the solo laners, at least, so that could be an influence here, especially with Ala and the Impale. And so, um, Griffith not able to, oh, it happened again, GLFS not able to uh, contest for that second set of uh, early objectives. So they take the dragon, they give up the, the, um, the grubs. Typically we see these teams again trading these objectives. It's really only been top esports that's consistently contended with both sides of the map at once. But they are a bit of an anomaly, Mazel, I feel like. Yeah, right we'll see them later today. We'll get to keep up with that one. But, uh... Yeah, IG, gonna trade that one on Griffith. Uh, GLFS, it's, it's gonna keep happening. Maybe <laughs> Your I should just brain let it happen. is dainted. It, it is so all over the place now. But uh, anyway, Brand is gonna be clearing through all these camps again. Yeah, just call it the champions, fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, it's a safe space nightmare, it's okay. They need to be fine. Uh, we did get ultis for Croco and GLFS, though, here, so maybe an uptick in terms of the kind of face forwardness of both junglers. I particularly want to see a little bit more proactiveness from Croco here on the map. That Glacial Prison, a perfect tool mm. to try to get some gold into the big carries. I think it also really helps that Shanks has gotten himself um, ahead in this mid lane matchup. You can very much do with Corky versus Yone. It's not a straight counter matchup. Yone is good into Corky, but it is not a free win. Shanks has got the cull. He's already pushing it anyway, stacking up a tier. And even then, he has lane control. So he's got two um, kind of cash in items later. And now we see Griffith getting angled towards top side. Ooh, Ixtal's impact gets all outed, so it does stop it. Zuyan going for the angle here, but it's GLFS that can't connect the damage. He still gets it, though. The Pyroclasm will help get first blood for IG. Takes a flash uh, from the brand from GLFS as he ends up taking down that first kill. We did say that brand, anything to keep him off the table is useful. Well, a kill very sure it puts him back onto that. Azala gets himself down for that first blood. Croco yet to make an impact in terms of those lanes just yet. I hope that table's not made out of wood because then uh, Brand kind of counteracts that. So yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can we'll, get a, we'll, get we'll a marble. We'll, 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 sure. we'll, we'll level up in the world, see if we can yeah, get yeah, a budget yeah, for a marble yeah, yeah. table just for him. <laughs> 
I do love that they force committed onto that though, because I think any resources is super important. They had the angle for it, and Ala just gets stopped in the middle of his mm. Ixtal's impact. And at this point, anyone's legend don't have jungle clear information. They don't know where GLFS is on the map, and Ala flashes out of that W would have had the increased damage, would have killed him. Um, you can see, sadly, for Ala, also uses that ult as he goes down too. It was immune, to, uh, or like, rather, gone unstoppable by Suyan on the other side. So he loses both flash and ult and his life. Not really a good haul there for the anyone's legend top lane at the star piece that came in. What a great start to this game. <laughs> we talked him up so much. He does yeah. still have a CS lead. Uh, did end up. Being able to get back to lane pretty quickly. So we now see anyone's legend moving over onto mid lane for Nani, who's very low and gonna walk over here to the left side. Glacial Prison waiting in tow, and there it Ooh. goes. Oh, oh, oh. Krako's gotta learn some drift skills here, but Nani ends up having to go back, has to use that fade seal to get out. Oh, that is a slick slide to the side by Nani with that uh, soul and bound gets out with his ultimate soup still means he's losing farm in this mid lane you can see big trade down towards that bot side as um glfs takes shows what he can do even without that first item completed but this mid lane control seems to be the safe harder for anyone's legend right now and it makes it so much easier to play around too because again you just have a go button for croco to get followed up on we do have more objectives spawning up, only a 20 second difference or so between them. GLFS and IG already down here. AL moving here as well. Kyle wants to go for the engage. There's the Mega Inferno Bomb as well. And GLFS is already down. Pyroclasm not going to be enough to take anybody out from the grave. And that means no jungler. That's a dragon for anyone's legend. Really nice combo between this bot side on the map plus Croco. We said that as soon as the um, the, the Sejuani comes online, they want to start getting these big engagements Shanks, off. Shanks, Shanks, Shanks caught bro. Out. There's a lot of people there and you didn't know where they were. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. Does have his teammates right behind him and gives us a scare of our lives as the curtain call is called. Nature's grasp on top of it. Kyle, one more shot. <gasps> it gets blocked. Oh! Huge blocks from Hope. The deadly flourish, not enough. Oh no, the sapling. Kyle, he's in there. He just dies to odd in the end, but guess who got the dragon? It was Kroko after everything. He's gonna get the fat flash over the wall and he dodges out of the deadly flourish yet again. Get yourself an AD carry that will body block for you like that. The mid-air body block from the Zig Satchel jump. The little yodel that could. Hope, I want him on my team, buddy. <laughs> I think a lot of players want him on their team all the way from his time on JDG. He has been an incredible carry and uh, even on the times on WE here before as Ala in a lot of trouble here. Chillafest has returned to the money bucket that is shaped as a scorpion. Ala left out on the top side to dry once again, but it's going to be uh, dragging over the side of anyone's legend for the cross map, I suppose. Uh, GLFS dying just before that. They're not going to help see many things. Kyle catches him out. Ooh, no flash. Yeah, that's a big CC combo. They are going to pop the Pyroclasm there. A lot of damage right back, but GLFS will fall. Not enough burn damage, though. Zion in a lot of trouble here. If he doesn't get out, Kyle's trying to follow up. Hope is right behind them, and another body's going to fall. Anyone's legend. We said they take advantage of your mistakes, and they absolutely capitalize. We said that IG, they are a team which very much likes to, uh, likes to scrap. Sometimes they don't know when they should stop scrapping, though. And this feels like one of those cases where they go in for a kill and they just overextend a little bit beyond the play. This is going to give up more kills to AL. They were quicker on the roam to bring more players to the fight as well. And they're also going to get themselves um, the grubs. But as we no said, way. IG, they do like to really keep fighting. One more, maybe. Wants to get the fifth one. Does indeed. It'll be just one. So Grubageddon has been stopped. All right, we got we got the calls out. Oh, no, Allah. We're in a lot of trouble Allah. again. Does end up having the Ixtal's impact out of the wall. Gets that safety. I was wondering whether Nanny would pull the ultimate and uh, drag him out of the wall with that CC. Uh, at least GLFS will be able to get a Grub on this one side. But this game feels very par for the course for both of these teams, anyone's legend, quick really? response teleports, good res good resets, good roams to the play. Feels like they understand where people need to be on the map at most points. It's not like they haven't been losing kills throughout this too. IG very quick and snappy at making plays, but they are currently getting just a little bit of those extra losses going their way with losing these objectives, losing the extra wave of farm, and that's led to a gold lead and an objective lead with the five groups, yeah. particularly now for anyone's legend. 
and with AL's comp, that's what we kind of talked about from the draft. They have just a lot of ease of execution in their front line finding engages. IG on the other side, they really need a lot of setup, either be it from the nature's grasp of Vampire on getting a big deadly flourish or beyond having any flanks. But the damage is a little bit harder to stick and a little bit harder to get into. Yeah, it, it, it does really feel like whenever Maokai is in a composition, Maokai makes your life a lot easier, but you only have one Maokai and only one Maokai <laughs> ultimate. So then you think, ah, when am I going to use this? What's it most valuable for? And that's when that kind of higher level decision making becomes really important. Vampire is getting bullied around here. Um, I think in terms of the laning phase, Arn and Vampire did pretty okay in regards to that. The Jin Maokai, uh, not always the most intuitive lane to play, especially compared to ones which are being picked up right now. They will need to see whether they can get control of a lane and start using that nature's grasp, as we were just saying, to set up this team. I think it is really critical that Vampire like this roams to the play effectively. Just keep going to the top lane. You'll find him eventually. Can the Skarner bury him himself through the dirt and he does Alcom gaming oh no no, no 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 on falling prey to all the gins worst nightmares and it's any cc anywhere he's down on might get a revenge kill from zuyan but he will end up falling as well so two in the middle for anyone's legend plus the turret and because you have that Ziggs Towers full so quickly, even at this point, we might see anyone's legend um, get themselves a herald after this point. All outer turrets are already down around IG. They're getting hit into their, uh, their inner turrets too. Herald hasn't even been taken. If AL can get themselves a good contest over that objective, and they absolutely have the items and the power spikes to do so, you can see that Shanks has his Cull Cushed it cashed in. Hope is at a point of power too. IG might start falling apart very, very quickly beyond this point. And that's why they want to teleport right now. Keep scrapping. Can't stop, won't stop. Zuyan on the other side of the fight. Vampire getting low, but it was all a bait there. There's the bait sealed onto the back, though. Croco able to find his way out. Zuyan finally gets over here. It's been towards hope the entire time. Oh, no. Odds curtain call called for nothing. Now Ala is here after the TP comes in, and he is the body you need and love. Ixtal's impact into the wall, but he's got the impale in now. Hope gets the damage down. Nani has the back line, though. He gets one there, too. And the damage from the bird is starting to be enough. Ala, you might have just ended Hope there. You had the savior play from Hope, and now he's looking Hope. for on. He will not fall. He does. And there's the one incredible play that IG needed. They love to scrap, and they will get themselves a goddamn scrap. I think that Nani on the Yone did such a good job continually dashing in and out of that fight to get huge value. It does stop AL from very smoothly going over towards another objective uh, take. If they do get themselves that Herald, um, it will be now at cost of that Dragon. They're going to roam towards that top side of the map. We did say that Herald is very, very important to them, and they can use it very powerfully. But at least IG get themselves a lot of gold and a big objective beyond that too. See that vampire, he just walks up too far here. The Maokai is not full tank as a support. It's very hard to yeah. be tanky. I think vampire really misspaces this fight, but it doesn't matter. They already have themselves them the right kind of shape for the team fight. Nani around the side, Arn being able to follow up from long range and GLFS sitting in a pocket to do damage too. Look how Nani uses the second cast of the E as well, just making sure he's threatening another angle. IG, regardless of whether that's oh. that, just keep fighting. Zvian all outs his way to a death as Croco picks up one for anyone's legend. Vampire setting him up with the nature's grasp and the carousel of fighting keeps turning Croco in trouble. He gets flashed in front of my vampire and the Arctic Assault is blocked. Uh, that's going to be IG at least taking one back. One for one. It's a lot of ultimates committed onto the Kassansi. But while all this is happening, again, AL are elsewhere on the map, so it's not necessarily even a, a, an even trade. I think that with the extra waves being taken up by anyone's legend in both mid and bot lane, as you see a, a waves even being lost to an inhibitor turret at yeah. just 17 minutes in, IG are still losing extra gold across it, even if, again, IG could absolutely... If there's one thing you can take away, it's <laughs> IG are pretty good at scrapping. They will just always full send it, get some value out of it. They're trying to pull AL down to the depths with them here in the scrap city that they've found at home. Uh, they end, do, end up finding a lot of those scraps, but again, it's still like a 6k lead for anyone's legend who have slowly but surely found themselves in prize position. There is this Rift Herald available for a little bit longer, so anyone's legend going to capitalize. And as we said, Herald, when you've already taken so many towers, when you're using the cross map so effectively, when you have a Ziggs on your roster for the extra siege, very important. IG are trying to contest, but they're too late. 
Actually, Nani got in the pit there to do a little bit of damage. But yeah, that Rift Herald down means that mid lane might be the focus here if they want to ride that baby into the sunset or maybe just into a tower as they try to get a little bit of a grasp back on the map. There's a ton of vision in saplings and things towards the top side of the map for IG, and that is a strength for them moving forward. Their vision game will be helped a lot by the way they have their composition set up. Gin traps as well help with that. You can see a load of them around mid lane. It can help you um, get some random pickoffs as well. But it's still defensive vision. You'd still try to oh, stop yeah, AL sure. from, you know, stomping down on your spine at this point. And it feels like it is going to be the finishing move quite soon. Two and a half items hit by most of AL. And let's be honest, if they get any CC onto a target, someone is going to die. It doesn't matter if that's Zuyan, <laughs> the tankiest member on the team, or someone even uh, less tanky. Of course, someone is going to be exploded. And if IG are not responding very quickly and have themselves a counter combo to get onto the back line, this game is going to fall apart very, very quickly in the way that we've seen previous fights do. And I think Croco has been a huge driver of the success of anyone's legend this game. I think it's been really awesome to see yeah, him sure. come over from the LCK, obviously with DRX before, but spent a lot of time on Live Sandbox as well. And he has been a proponent of a lot of the aggressive changes in the jungle meta. He's been very, very flexible in his picks. And he's also just been a ruthless son of a gun every uh, single time. Shanks? Uh, don't, yeah, hey, Buddy, I was talking take, about Croco. Don't worry about what Shanks is doing. Officer, take his driving license. <laughs> Zuyan uh, might need to get a license of his own taken away from a Mega Inferno bomb used to clear the wave. The Rift Herald is there to try to take this turret down. Nani tries to go for the play, misses everything, and goes right back to his clone, sad and defeated. Well, I mean, he might have scored a goal in football, but um, not in League Legends. Goes right between the posts and finds no one. I think Nani on the Yone has been one of the few bright sparks in this game. He's not died. He's 2-0-2. Sadly for him, he's had to do his own stunts in that situation, though, because the setup wasn't really in place in time from IG. Um, the Herald not charging doesn't even end up mattering. I don't know whether Shanks just wanted to give them a <laughs> handicap or something. That one confuses me, Bazel. It confuses me. We can stay confused. <laughs> so we're not going <laughs> to get an answer. So helpful. Uh, you're welcome. Hey, that's what I'm here for. We do have another minute until a dragon spawns would be a sole point for IG on an infernal soul. I think AL might be sticking around a little long here because IG have reset. They'll get that blue buff as well. And no mana on anyone's legend means open up on his here. Allah. Oh, oh, okay. He gets the fourth shot over there on the other side to try to slow down Kyle. GLFS ends up getting the kill onto Allah. That was a really good spread of the E uh, from the brand. Got the mark onto the blue buff. Gets the spread afterwards, which I don't know whether Allah expected. I don't think Allah's expected a lot, which has happened in this game. I feel like he's just been vibing and occasionally dying. He's not going to be here for potential dragon fight in 20 seconds. IG, they do still have themselves a lot of their big ultimates. They could still theoretically find a good angle. Need to see Ooh. if they can find that backline and take them off the table before the big combo comes through. I'm surprised Vian didn't decide to keep his TP. They will end up having Nani keep the TP and push down bot side, but there's some really good TP wards by IG right now on the back side of the fight. Vian can't oh, give him his is. life there, and there it is. Nani going to pull the trigger, but AL see it plain as day. They're going to get their own TP, and that's Ala, the big scorpion, coming to make a difference. But guess who is the difference maker? Kyle gets the Magnet Storm. Big fate sealed, though. It might actually be Nani that's popping off here. Zuyan is dead, though, on the other side. Double impale from Ala. And what did we say about this champion? No matter what, it is worth something, and it might just be worth the whole shebang as anyone's legend decimate IG. They're moving straight to the Baron. The Mirrors are Baron, they have a wave in the mid lane too, which could potentially even take an in hip tower. AL find their combo, and IG don't find their setup. Try as they might. The gold lead is too big. The difference in strength is just too big. Baron goes down, it'll be on five members, and this should be, as we were saying, the start of the day, the start of what looks like to be a victory lap of Group D from anyone's legend, comprehensively beating out the other teams within their group. Kyle finds the combo now. God. See that what happens when everyone throws their ultimates, someone explodes. And with the brand off the board, you just don't have the extra staying power to find that extra damage on the back end of the fight. Gets close. They should have probably taken one or two, but the brand being taken off the board so early means that they just can't finish these kills. God, Zvian had such a good angle on the backliners of anyone's legend, but felt dicey running into the bombs there and unable to capitalize on the position they had. So a couple things going wrong for IG. Meant a holistic win by AL, 
But man, if those couple things went right, could have been a little bit of a different fight there. We do get the reset coming out from IG. They'll lick their wounds and try to find a little bit of saving grace on the map here. Anyone's legend in complete control. Almost 10,000 gold in the lead, 23 and a half in. So this is where it feels like the death push comes in from anyone's legend. They have far too many items, um, frankly illegal. Oh, Don't know where they got oh, all of them oh. from. And dun, we've got dun, ourselves potentially a big dun, combo dun, coming through. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Croco didn't realize they're all there. <laughs> Mega Inferno Bob takes half of their health underneath there. And now Vampire is almost dead, but he makes it out by the skin of his teeth. Now Croco in some trouble here. He's going to bring the explosion over to Hope as he falls. But now Ala is here. Full health and all legs available for him to run at IG. IG have the turnaround damage. So AL, they overestimate themselves a little bit and maybe did not expect everyone to be around that corner, but IG, they'll take that freebie. It means that one of the big tanks is off the table, and it means that the push gets a little bit harder. If Hope can hit this tower, it will melt, but they're trying to wave through as best they can. So he still has ult. If he hits a Q3, potentially could be dangerous, but he can't put himself out of position to do so. I love how confident AL are playing, even though they're down to mana advantage, because look, one hit from a bomb does almost all their health here, and Hope has hit those item thresholds to make him a scary customer indeed. Ola gets stuck in the wall right there, though. He's in a lot of trouble here. All out and under the turret. He's going to Ixtal's impact his way out to safety. I think with those kind of chunks, you can see that AL is struggling to use the Baron buff for what it should have been useful, you know, to end the game. They're pushing in one lane, but that one lane has been defended well so far. Haven't quite been able to get the turret down into Satchel Megan range, so Hope can't up. get himself um, that execute combo. And yeah, the ult is up from Hope. He has teleport. He'll probably go back. Get an there item. it is. Oh no, he's just gonna use it right now. <laughs> oh, if he did it a little earlier, it might still kill on. He's burned. Okay, it's not gonna be enough. Whew, that was close. Yeah, close red stuff. I was starting to think, well, maybe he goes back, buy some items, and then uses it for extra damage. <laughs> no, because he's gonna no, back he's... TP top and take it to your All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> my god. Again. Oh no! It's a catastrophe here, and it's all AL. It looks like they just wanted to buy a couple more items to uh, put on their shelf here before they need to finish off this game number one. They're on the last Nexus, or at least the uh, Inhib turret. Now, now, the Nexus turret's in mid lane. Might be the case instead, actually. Okay, it looks like they're gonna just go for this mid lane tower instead of the Nexus turrets, and the Inhibs are the focus. But AL just want to put finishing touches on this one. It's been a pretty soft and easy snowball for them as they started strong early and developed leads all over the place. And now they just need to finish everything off. Oh, and Bale goes a little bit wide. Nani trying to go for a big play on the side, but he'll have to go back to his shadow. Now Kyle gets a big engage on the Vampire there, and he's already dead. Mega Inferno Pop can be flashed out of. Curtain call might make this hard for them to move forward. The Pyroclasm had already been used. Look at the damage it's doing. Ooh. It has shot through the middle. Look how much damage the GLFS is doing right now. Those damage numbers go nutty. And anyone's legend, they've slipped. They've dropped the ball. And IG are picking it up all day. There are hit pings onto a board down towards Dragon as well. The Dragon is sporting in 20 seconds. Again, what should have been a victory lap, AL kind of uh, choke out. They push into one lane in top side, which gets wave cleared. They take too long to use that. And while they do end up taking two inhibitors, the game doesn't end, which is better than IG would have assumed at a certain point. Big props, GLFS. Nanian Arm putting out some huge turnaround damage, finding finally some pockets of space. Vampire goes through the impale and just to uh, sidestep his on as well, which means that Arla capping off. Not a great Skarda game so far. <laughs> still Skarda, so he's still useful, but not necessarily the game he would have wanted. And because of that kind of failed engage from the combo, you can see the long range follow up comes through, and we're onto the dragon Ooh. taken by IG. It is a dragon taken by IG, so third dragon of the game for them. Sole point there, but AL, they're closing off the exit points for IG. As they do, they actually catch down Shanks. Hell, really wanted to uh, capitalize on that, but they won't find it. No, they won't. So, IG, they have two broken inhibitors to defend. AL can just sit up in this one last lane, poke out four forever with the Ziggs. Uh, he has his ult back up. That is a very scary hope on one side, and it feels like the carries from AL, they're not the ones which are necessarily dying, which is a bit of a problem. They are. They have two deaths combined between them. IG is sometimes yeah. killing the front line, but they're not hitting the damaging members. Which means that as nice as this is, it is just a delaying of the inevitable unless they get a combo onto the back line. And that's where uh, I think that's the, the ticket in, but that's also for AL, what we talked about literally since minute one. They oh, the just CC. have the go buttons when they're ahead, and Nani can't really do anything in the end there. It does get a little bit of damage onto Kyle. 
A lot of poke coming right back his way. Impale, and he's impaled on the spike in front of his teammates. Hope claims another one, and the last in his turret's gonna fall, and that might just signal the end here, Nymera. Oh, and IG try as they might, they try and scrap, but all they do is scrap their way to the green screen again. Oh, three man fade sealed there. Are we seeing this again? No, Kyle wants to shut the door on the faces of IG. They take the last Nexus turret. They won't make the same mistake again. They'll hit a couple times onto the Nexus, but it's the kills that they want. Pad those stats as anyone's legend. We know they can bleed, but they won't bleed so far tonight. Oh, and IG, they were just outclassed. It felt like, yes, they had themselves a um, good amount of fighting potential. I think that particularly Arn on the on the Jin gave some real issues. Being able to turn around yeah. some damage from huge range once some people had overestimated their health bars a bit. But realistically, <laughs> they were just kind of dopamine kills. They're just a kill here and there. They never really led to big um, strategic advantages. And now we see anyone's legend having the better game sense, having the better macro. And IG couldn't manage to match them across the entire map. And that's where, you know, a lot of the draft adaptation we saw for this game one actually means a lot because, you know, you, you get some pretty strong picks from the side of anyone's legend not going to be available to them any longer. But it's really about kind of that consistent style of composition that they found and a lot of strength through Croco individually helping out a lot of the rest of the team. I'm very interested what IG's response is going to be. We're going to step